Well, let's uh, begin now with a uh, developing story as President Mohamed Ubuari has received the AstraZeneca vaccine a day after the federal government launched the vaccination exercise in the country. Now, he took the job on Saturday at the new banquet hall of the presidential villa in Abuja, the nation's capital. The vaccine was administered to the president by his chief personal physician in the presence of the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, and some members of the federal executive council. Now, shortly after Buhari took the job, Professor Shibadu also received uh, the vaccine, which was also administered to him by his chief personal physician. Well, Victor Anya joins me at the table to shed light on uh, these burning issues on the program today. He's a media consultant, as well as the principal consultant, Media Act and Solution. Victor, thank you for coming through. Many thanks for inviting me. All right, let's uh, begin with the fact that Mr. President and VP has, they have been vaccinated by the COVID-19 uh, uh, AstraZeneca vaccines. Uh, what are your views about this, especially the fact that Mr. President had to make it a public display? Well, uh, that transfer was taken for the purpose of building, building confidence on the minds of uh, Nigerians because uh, many people have doubts whether uh, it will be efficient uh, on, the, on the lives of uh, people because uh, we've had stories of uh, some citizens that took it in some other country, uh, I mean, on other version of COVID-19 vaccines, and uh, there were negative uh, reports about the negative uh, effects of the vaccine. That is why the president had advised how to take uh, the vaccine to demonstrate to the world and to Nigerians in uh, particular that uh, there are no serious side effects. But my greatest worry about this development is the fact that uh, a third world country like India that got uh, independence 13 years before Nigeria was the one that developed this uh, vaccine. Because mm. this uh, vaccine was developed in the uh, Soram Institute of India, and to to portray the the efficacy of the vaccine is that uh, even Canada, a much more developed country, is coming to buy the vaccine from from India. That's to show you that India is a very serious uh, country that is looking ahead. Uh, at a time that uh, they got independence, uh, India and Nigeria were were almost at par. But today. You can see the giant uh, stride they have taken, the mm -hmm. development uh, steps they have taken that have made them to be ahead of us. That is my major concern. My concern is not even because uh, the president has taken it, the vice president has taken it. My concern is that this was once a third world country, a country that got independence in 1947. Then Nigeria got independence in 1960. A space of 30 years, look at the development that they have achieved. That is the area I even want to concern myself with in this discourse. Not that the president has taken it or the vice has taken it. Why is it that Nigeria is still this quagmire when India has taken such massive developmental uh, steps ahead of us that Canada is even going there to import this uh, vaccine from them? That is the area I want to concern myself with because it is not just about uh, uh, discussion is not just about saying that uh, a country is a giant of Africa. If you are a giant of Africa, what can you show for being a giant of Africa? That is the area I want to concern myself with. And I think that all Nigeria should be worried that at this level, we, as the giant of Africa, we cannot even contribute to health issue in this world, that we are looking outside of the world where we claim to be the giant of Africa. We have a herbal medicine that we can be developed, but because of selfish issue, selfishness, we will not be able to put those things together to ensure that at least we are contributing something to the development of the world. As a giant of Africa, what can we say that we have contributed to the development of the world? In our aspect of the world, is there anything we can say that as giant of Africa, that this is what we have contributed to the world. That is my, Victor, that but, is my but, major concern. It but, is not about uh, whether president so, has... So, so, some persons may argue with you that yeah. we have a, a large chunk of Nigerians who are outside this country who are doing well in, in different fields. They are contributing to the development of uh, the countries um, of the world where, where they are. I mean, in America, for instance, um, 
we, we understand that Nigerian was part of those who uh, discovered the vaccines as well. So some Nigerians may may differ with the fact that Nigerians are doing well, they are the, contributing yes, to, yes, to international yes. development and they are and doing and well in other countries. Why is it their own country? Why is their own country not give you the, the enablement, enabling environment for them to do well here? As a journalist, can you point to anything that we have contributed to the world internally? We are looking outside. If the whole world has been looking outside, who would have developed the vaccine? That, because if we don't, if we don't ask ourselves questions, one of the things that make people to progress is by sitting down and looking world and asking yourself questions. If you don't ask yourself questions that, ah, as we ask docile, if India has been docile, if the country, uh, the Johnson and Johnson that developed the other vaccine, has been docile. If uh, Moderna has been docile, the country that uh, is uh, inhabited there are docile. Who would have provide? Who would have developed this vaccine that the whole world is looking at? Because it's a time, high time we challenge ourselves. We are not challenging ourselves in this in this world. Mm -hmm. We are just onlookers. How can we continue to be onlookers? That is my challenge because mm -hmm. I question myself every time that uh, right. somebody will develop an airplane that will fly all over the whole world. Why is it that the black man is not uh, trying to challenge himself? So, okay, this is what I can do to contribute to humanity, to mm -hmm. development of this world. That all is right. what we have to look at. I'm, I'm, I'm pain that we, I find myself in this environment that we cannot challenge ourselves. We are always, always looking outside. You want to take medication, somebody want to just uh, do checkup for medical checkup. He takes a passport, he flies abroad. The country you are flying to, if they are so docile like yourself, where would you have gone to? It's uh, high Victor, time we Victor, have to Victor, those, are, those are really very uh, pressing and big, big questions uh, begging for answer. As we stay with Nigeria's uh, COVID-19 vaccination program, which was just flagged off yesterday, and Mr. President and the VP, publicly getting the AstraZeneca vaccines. There are also a number of other issues we definitely need to look at. For instance, the report that 10.6 billion Naira is uh, going to be used to transport uh, the vaccines to the 36 or 30, yes, 36 states. We'll get to your perspective um, about that. And of course, we keep talking about why Nigerians are also a bit uh, skeptical about the vaccines. That's a question that we'd like you to contribute to as we take a look at uh, the vaccination exercise of the Nigerian government. Stay with us. We're back in just a moment. There are numbers for you to contribute on the show uh, this afternoon. We'll definitely get to display those numbers uh, very, very shortly. Let's take this very short break. Take a look at that uh, exercise, the flag of yesterday in Abuja, where Dr. Ciprin Ngong made history a frontline worker who has been um, at the forefront of the fight against COVID-19 one year ago. I mean, that uh, last year when the COVID-19 broke out here in Nigeria. And he has been at the forefront and he was one of the first uh, frontline uh, workers who was uh, vaccinated yesterday in the nation's capital of Abuja. We're back in just a moment. Stay with us. Talk of discrimination by the virus are numerous. They include the fact that we must approach the vaccines phase with unity of purpose. Two, we must understand that nobody is safe until everyone is vaccinated. And three, we must recognize that vaccine hesitancy will impact negatively on our lives and those of our loved ones if allowed to foster. mention that within the FCT, for instance, we already have designated 65 vaccines. Well, thanks for staying with us. You're watching Editors Forum live here on Galaxy TV, and we are live from our studios here in Lagos, Nigeria. We are staying with the COVID-19 vaccination exercise of our great nation, uh, Nigeria. But we are also asking on the program, uh, why are Nigerians uh, still skeptical about uh, the vaccines? I mean, despite the level of awareness, uh, of, of course, we also have feeders that Mr. President and Vice President have been vaccinated. We'll get your views about that 
very shortly as we have numbers uh, for you to contribute on the show this afternoon. But joining us at the table to also get some perspective is Yemi Saka. He's a media consultant, a public affairs analyst, among many other things. Yemi, thank you so much for coming. It's uh, nice this to be here. Victor, happy new year. <laughs> this is the first time I say Victor. Yeah, yeah, welcome. <laughs> for, for a moment, uh, I, I thought uh, we just had uh, a senator join us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? There are a lot of journalists and media practitioners in the Senate. Mm. So mm -hmm. maybe you're sitting, so maybe you have a crystal ball looking at you. <laughs> okay, I mean, let's, let's, um, <laughs> let, 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 let's, let's, let's get your immediate reaction to uh, Mr. President and the Vice President receiving the AstraZeneca vaccine publicly. I mean, oh, well, fine. It's, um, it's a move to build um, the confidence of Nigerians and, you know, get them to toe the line that this is the right thing to do. But uh, one major thing I took away from that event, I don't know, maybe Nigerians, it's not just about criticizing, but it's, um, it's something that I felt there was no need for that long speech. I know, not, even if it was that the president could not even speak for his art, he has to, to be scripted. Mm. It's, uh, it shows that we are in danger if we don't have a mind that can't even, at this, so it's not like, a, it's not so much a state function that you can't speak from your heart to have something to like process in your head and spill out. For me, that's that's. He a doesn't have a medical background. Well, no, it's not so about it, medical I, background. I mean, this is what has been happening in the world. There's COVID nineteen. There's vaccine in, in place. I'm going to take the vaccines. This is what this is. This is, this is for you. This is I'm coming. I'm coming. No, don't, don't that, get that, me wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming countries. to something. I'm coming to something. Even in developed countries. You see, you, you guys have. It's for me to lay a foundation for some mm. other things. We guys have. You guys have been missing out. Buhari as the president has not spoken to Nigeria on scripted since 2016. It's a disaster. I bet I bet to disagree with you. Okay, on okay that. that is that is one. I bet to disagree. No, on that, that is one. We have a visual that about security that we hear him speak without scripts. Okay, time will tell. We'll secondly, <laughs> secondly, well, I I heard before I came on set, I heard you um, grilling Victor about why Nigerians are not believing in, um, mm -hmm. or probably not. Committed. Are, are Nigerians still skeptical? That's the yeah, question. Uh, it's, yeah, Nigerians are, and I'll tell you why. We need a background and foundation for it. We've had people, public office holders, mm -hmm. come out to tell you that they had COVID and they treated themselves with alternative therapy or some things like that. Now, we have a Nigerian government. Let, let, let us tell ourselves the truth. That is broke. And you couldn't do your nation the great service by documenting the alternative therapy, which you know is accessible to almost every Nigerian document the process and showcase to the world that yes we have COVID, we had COVID-19 in Nigeria yes we believe in, in yes medical therapy and what have you and best practices but we had this alternative therapy too that we used adopted by Nigerians and it worked that will probably give Nigerians a semblance of relief or excuse from probably the restrictions that come from vaccination because we, we over, that is one that is part one part two the government of the day is responsible for Nigerians being skeptical about COVID-19. And I'll tell you why. You lock down the whole nation. There's the mm. most be total lockdown. Yes, we, are, we agree that yes, we want to curb the spread of COVID-19. But during the lockdown, you are busy jumping around from one point to the other politicking. And the state governor cannot be excused. Mm. You are the chief of uh, the private secretary of the, pres of, of the president fleeing to Lagos. The allegations that uh, the son of Bola Metinobu went out of the country. Is it, so when, when you now put all this into consideration, you now people start wondering, are these guys taking us for a ride? Well, uh, yeah, and that is responsible. Sorry, sorry, I'm coming. Before I go, the responsibility of the this. government is responsible for Nigerians' reactions to COVID-19. Now, when we look at why people are skeptical, I, it's not a Nigerian thing. Because I've spoken to a frontline worker in the UK on one of uh, our programs here on Galaxy TV, and he said, naturally, even the blacks in the United Kingdom are skeptical that is part about one. receiving the vaccine. That there is, is something one. about religion on one part. I was going to come to that. that there is, is something about 666 on one part. No, that, I was coming to that. That is part one. Now, the part two is the irresponsibility of religious leaders. I saw, I saw a recording of a pastor, Pastor Sarah. I'm not giving out free adverts in Kaduna came out as a pastor and said COVID-19 is real and gave us a shared testimony of our experiences. But you see one man in Oregon. You don't have to mention him. I'm not mentioning him. I just said there's a man in Oregon. I didn't mention him. There are, there are a lot of pastors in Oregon. But you see one man in Oregon 
that will come out and tell you they have the plans. It's big, it's rolled out. They will lock you down, they will give us, you see, and you know, and because these guys have so large so you think that religious that's leaders also responsible. should be held responsible they, so, Some of them should be held that. responsible uh, for uh, their Victor, reckless utterances. Yes, Victor, is, is that a view you share? Is that a position uh, that you share? Uh, partially, partially, but uh, the emphasis being laid on COVID-19 is what is creating the uh, skepticism. COVID-19 is not the only disease that is killing people. Mm -hmm. Hunger is the number one disease. Why is well, that? In, in Africa. Africa. Yes, it's not, not only in Africa. 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 Go and Google it. About 80 million people are killed every year by hunger. So no, why, is so attention, no Nigerian thing. why is attention not being given to uh, uh, solving food security? Every time when a virus breaks up, you see billionaires all over the world donating. In ordinary time, when hunger is killing people, why are the billionaires not taking cognizance of hunger and donating to the poor people so that they are taking to eat? That is wrong. When I people, when people, no, let me finish. When people, do you know what is uh, one of the promoters of uh, diseases in the world? Hunger. Because when you are hungry, your immune system is damaged. And once your immune system is damaged, any ordinary uh, fluid can take your life because your immune system cannot resist right. that, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, fluid. Right. So what gentlemen. we are saying is that mm. the attention being given to COVID-19 is what is driving this skepticism skepti skepti in the world. Right, For instance, sure. in Nigeria, yeah, we have Lassa fever that is claiming life. Mm. Who, which which government uh, agency have given us the number of people that have been killed by uh, right. last fever Vic, Vic, or malaria Vic, uh, or uh, other diseases? But, but, but I, I understand that um, um, a pharmacist, uh, Dr. Felix Ajayi, uh, joins us live from Abiyokuta, a former director of pharmacy from the Federal Medical Center, Abiyokuta. Dr. Felix, thank you so much uh, for coming through for us on the program this afternoon. The big, big question is, why are Nigerians still skeptical about the vaccines? Okay, it does appear that um, we are yet to establish uh, contact with Dr. Felix Ajayi, live for us from Abiyokuta. We hope we can uh, do that very shortly as we begin to round off on this topic. Gentlemen, maybe in, 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 in 60 seconds or less, your final thoughts um, about this, because I, I, I still feel that even with the president and the VP going as far as making this public, Nigerians still have their doubt and all of that. But then again, there's a question of 10.6 billion naira being used to roll out these vaccines to these 36 states. I want your take on that. Apart from that, it's also the fact that the federal government also says that they will uh, roll out these vaccines to states if the governors show interest. So if the governor of uh, one of the states now, I, I don't need to mention any states, says, I don't want the vaccines. For instance, the Kogi state governor, I mean, I didn't want to mention, but I think I have to mention, <laughs> let's say the Kogi state governor who doesn't, I, I mean, from his interaction, probably doesn't even believe in uh, uh, the virus, says, I don't want the vaccines in Kogi state. Does that mean that people who have uh, COVID-19 in, in Kogi state will not be treated? So your, your views about the 10.6 billion naira on transportation of the vaccines is it too much is it something we have to be worried about as well as uh, the fact that the governors have the option of whether yes, to I'm, take I'm, the vaccine i'm out. worried if you spend 10.7 billion to distribute uh, just 3.9 billion vaccines I mean, uh, in a population of 200 million, 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 million what yes. happens if even though if you are able to distribute this vaccine to reach those uh, 3.9 million people what happened to the remaining Nigerians? Should they die if actually this vaccine is, uh, uh, is, uh, is effective? Should the remaining Nigeria, rest of Nigeria should die? To me, I see that as an oppressive system that if the vaccine cannot go around, there is no need of uh, distributing it in the first place. Because if truly they believe in the efficacy of the vaccine, then they, they, should, they should get as much as 200 million to cover the 200 million people we have in this country. Unless they are telling us that we are not up to 200 so million. Because it, million is, million it, is, it is discriminatory for you to say you want to save some some of, uh, members of the society while other people will not have access to that. So for that, to me, it is discriminatory and it should be discontinued. And again, you cannot spend. What did you, what, how, much are you, how much are you saying that? 10.6 10, 10. 10. billion. 10.6 billion. billion naira. Divided by 3.9 uh, million, uh, million uh, vaccine. And see the, the differential. This is how they swallow our oil money for just no reason. Mm -hmm. How can you use 10. something billion 
to distribute just nine uh, point uh, uh, three point nine uh, million vaccines. All right. Do, does it correspond? Uh, uh, it doesn't yeah, correspond. Yeah, yeah, your, your views on uh, your views about that? As well, well, for me, I, I I think it is uh, because th these are vaccines that should be preserved in in a condition that we don't have available right now. But it would have been better the ten point six billion naira that that we are going to spend transporting these vaccines to um, to the six states of the federation, plus or minus. I believe if you are giving it to NIMA, the Institute of Medical Research at Yaba, we have, they would have produced vaccines that would go around Nigeria. It shows you the priority of those in government, and it shows you how they think. Mm -hmm. And Boeing Fashola's word, when it was out of the government and the center, it was saying that governance is not rocket science. But in government now, they are proving to us that governance is seriously rocket science. For me, to address the issue of skepticism, I think there's a need for the National Education Agency to step up. I think that's the agency that has been either in coma since the beginning of this administration. They've done nothing and they're still doing nothing. A lot of advocacy in place would have gone along with telling people that the vaccines is good for you. There's a, there's a lot of speculation why people are skeptical. Even you've seen medical practitioners, you know, people, this also in the field telling you that the, right. the vaccine would change your DNA. That's wow. another thing. In that's, that's, another thing. that's something to worry about. That's but, uh, to worry about. Let, let, let's see now. Um, Austin um, from Nasara State says Nigerians are skeptical because many Nigerians do not believe in the government of the day because of the lies and propaganda the government is known with. Ogene Austin from Nasara State. Thank you so much um, for uh, your thoughts. Well, gentlemen, I think we just have to wrap up on this now. But I, ca I cannot leave without asking both of you. When are you receiving your own vaccine? If it's available, we, if it's available we, to, we, if it's available, we, to, if, we are talking about that. Okay. if it's available right now, I'll take it. How about you, Victor? Will you ever get to me? Am I, <laughs> am I in this country? No, no, let not be first try with ourselves. Or am I in right. this society? We are okay. talking about three point nine million vaccines. That, that's just one point six something. In a country, right. two hundred million. Because I have to take two so jobs. So it's like if all the ministers, if all governors, commissioners, and the government agency take it, what? What is left for the common man? Mm. I mean, one of the common men in this country. So how will I be able to get it? That is the question. All right. So, well, we hope that when the vaccines get to you, wherever you are in the country, you will get to receive it. But I understand that uh, Dr. Felix Ajayi is, uh, has now joined us on the program. Well, Dr. Felix, we're actually on security uh, issues at the moment, but I'm sure we can just get your views uh, very quickly about uh, the, the, the COVID-19 vaccination uh, program here in Nigeria. Why are Nigerians still skeptical about the vaccination here in the country? Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon, uh, viewers and the moderator of the program. Uh, it's quite my pleasure to join you on the program. Um, well, talking about uh, skepticism of uh, many Nigerian citizens about these vaccines, uh, won't be strange to us because even from the first, even from the time of the of the of the first wave, many people have been skeptical about the pandemic itself. Most people didn't believe that um, uh, that it was real, and up to now. Many people don't believe that it's real. And that is why you find out that uh, if they are not, if they are still so skeptical about the reality of the pandemic, how won't they be skeptical about uh, the, the, the vaccines? Uh, some people believe that it's just a way of uh, siphoning money, or it's about the rich nations of the world taking advantage of the poor nations or developing nations. Some even believe that the um, vaccines uh, will have on towards effects. Why some others believe that you, uh, it, it, it's about uh, uh, religiosity. If you get what I mean. People be, some people believe that People should not take it as a mark of the beast. You have so many theories. And that is why you find out that... And uh, we have to...
round of very very shortly if you can hear me uh, dr felix uh, you have spoken a lot about what people believe but it, in 60 seconds or less what do you believe and what are your thoughts yes i believe in the reality of the pandemic and in, i believe that uh, the factions are here for good and they are for the good of the people i believe people should take it so as to gradually reduce the incidence of the, the infection amongst our people until we have such um, the quantity that will go around as many of us as possible and so reduce the pandemic to an insignificant level. All right, Dr. Felix uh, Ajayi, live for us in our Biokuta, former director of pharmacy, Federal Medical Center. Thank you so much for your views on Editors Forum. You're welcome. Thank you.